from Hilo, Hawaii. Today we are going to talk about growing hydroponic cucumbers by a non-circulating hydroponic method. The growing tank will be 8 foot long by 19 inches wide by 7 inches high. A homemade float valve rests on a concrete tile in the middle of the tank. Nutrient solution flows into the float valve by gravity feed. Extruded polystyrene foam blocks float on the solution and force a neoprene foam seal against the nozzle to control the flow. Solution passes out of the float valve into the growing tank. The tank is covered with window screen to provide mosquito control. There are a few holes in the screen from a previous crop. There will be a polystyrene cover over the screen and I'm hoping the mosquitoes don't find their way into the tank. The quarter inch tubing to the float valve will be inserted into a half inch tubing and this leads to another quarter inch tubing which is inserted into the elevated nutrient solution supply tank. A float valve supplies water and keeps the tank full. The electrical conductivity was about 0.95 millisiemens per centimeter. That's too low. We want to be at around 2 millisiemens per centimeter. Equal amounts of two stock solutions will be added to increase the nutrient solution strength. Stock solution A contains 1 pound per gallon of ChemGrow 81536 plus 0.6 pounds per gallon of magnesium sulfate. The ChemGrow also contains micronutrients. This is actually a lettuce formulation, but it works pretty good for cucumbers too. ChemGrow and other companies also make a cucumber formulation, and that would be recommended if cucumbers would be the only crop that you are going to grow. The stock solution is stirred and then measured. Solution B contains one pound per gallon of solution grade calcium nitrate, plus as an option, one teaspoon per gallon of iron chelate may also be added. Stock solution B is stirred and then measured with a graduated plastic pitcher. For the current situation, about 550 milliliters of stock solution A and an equal amount of stock solution B will be added to the tank. The solution in the tank is mixed, then stock solution A is added, then the solution is mixed some more, then stock solution B is added, and finally the tank is mixed some more. Now the solution reads 2.45 millisiemens. I try to keep the solution in the range of 1.5 to 2.5 millisiemens. Let's turn our attention to planting. I like to plant seeds in these seedling blocks, and then by planting a few extra blocks, I can easily select the best seedlings. Seedlings are then transplanted into the 8-inch forestry tubes. Actually, the seeds could be directly planted into the tubes. Notice that the forestry tubes are placed in a cup. This is an easy way to water the seedlings. When the seedlings are about two weeks old, the tubes are planted into the holes of the polystyrene tank cover. My covers are old and can no longer suspend the tubes, which just fall to the bottom of the tank. But these net tubes conveniently raise the seedlings above the cover. Only four tubes are being planted for this eight foot long tank. There are a lot of extra holes in the top covers which should be plugged. I'm feeling kind of lazy. I'm just going to let it go. Notice the water level indicator which shows that there are about two to three inches of nutrient solution in the tank. Three weeks have passed and the cucumbers are growing very nicely. Another week has passed and it looks like the plants have more than doubled in size. It's 34 days after transplanting and there's lots of vines and lots of blossoms. And do I see little cucumbers? Yes, and that's no April Fool's joke. What could be more special than picking the first big cucumber from the crop? The cucumber's a little bit curved, but that's just fine with me. Yes, folks, it is truly amazing to see so much foliage growth from those four small seedlings only 40 days after transplanting.
Let's look inside the canopy to see if we can find more cucumbers. Oh yeah, there's, there's one, there's another one. Yes, and there's another one. Yes, there's plenty of cucumbers under this canopy. Well, 19 days of producing cucumbers has passed, and I noticed that the plants will down at midday on sunny days. Some of this may be due to a heavy fruit load. And here's an example of a nice straight cucumber. This cucumber was over 16 inches long and weighed about one and a quarter pounds. That's about as good as you can get. Unless you wait five more days and find this 19 inch cucumber weighing two pounds. On April 28th, I noticed that the plants were starting to look a little bit beat but they were still producing and they should be good for another week or two. I terminated the crop on May 6th and during the cleanup process found this humongous cucumber hiding behind the tank, which was 20 inches long and weighed over three pounds. Cucumbers like this can drain a lot of energy from a plant. Here are some highlights from another cucumber crop grown in this same tank. This must be cucumber heaven. This variety is Golden Valley Seed GVS 603, which is a Persian Bayet Alpha hybrid, which is considered to have gynecious and parthenocarpic characteristics. Parthenocarpic means to produce fruit without pollination, and gynecious means that they only produce female flowers. It's time to clean up. So all the foliage is removed, and the top covers are taken away. It looks like a mass of roots below the screen. Mosquito larvae or wigglers are swimming in the nutrient solution and there are some adult mosquitoes trapped under the screen. I should have used a new screen and plugged up the empty holes in the tank cover. Sometimes when you're lazy, it comes back to bite you. Soap water is being sprayed to wet the wings of the mosquitoes so they won't be able to fly and bite me. The screen was removed and I didn't get bit. This is kind of fun. There's just a huge mass of intertwined roots. The roots can be removed from the tank with a wooden stick. The roots are prominently displayed on this metal fence. Let's take a little root tour. The roots were taken to the green waste bin and then composted. Roots managed to find their way into the float valve, even though there were only two small holes in the bottom of the float valve. The float valve was disassembled Roots are growing all over the float blocks and even over the foam seal, but the float valve performed flawlessly during the crop. The foam seal is comprised of IT100 polyethylene foam and needs to be replaced before the float valve can be used again. This neoprene seal was used in the second cucumber crop. It should still be good for another crop. The remaining nutrient solution is emptied from the tank with a Tigon tubing siphon. Any remaining solution can be sponged up or just allowed to dry, but it is advisable to wipe the tank with a chlorine solution before the next crop. Hopefully this nearby coconut tree will be able to make good use of the leftover nutrient solution. If cucumbers become infected with powdery mildew, it would be wise to wait a few months before planting in the same location again. When one float valve is being employed per tank, nutrient solution imbalances will occur if the tank is longer than eight feet. Try to maintain a nutrient solution pH of around 6.0. Well, folks, there are other non-circulating hydroponic ways to grow cucumbers. I'm sure you will improve on the current method. For now, I bid you Aloha!